but I'm excited to, to show you not five tips in five minutes, but five truths in five minutes. So this is the real deal. Here are my disclosures that are up to date. So people ask, is there any difference compared to open? Well, it's common sense, right? Kind of like wearing a mask during a pandemic. Um, if we look at open versus percutaneous, you know, if we just look at the incisions themselves, you know, it looks pretty clear which one you would want to offer your patient, which, which type of procedure your patient would want. So here's the real deal, not the fake news. The obvious differences. So there's less pain with MIS. There's a faster recovery with MIS. Equal results at two years. Yes, only two years, Mark. We don't have long-term yet. Better cosmesis, this is clear and obvious. It is technically challenging and it does lack long-term data. So truth number one, MIS hallux valgus corrections require less opioids. So those of you who know me well know that opioids um, around foot and ankle surgery is one of my passions. I've developed a novel, a novel post-op pain protocol that I've been using for about the past four years. And when you look at all patients um, that were I, uh, all of my surgical patients compared to my colleagues at HSS, my patients take an average of 2.5 pills compared to 22.5 pills. And this is for all procedures, just to give you background. So even within my own novel, novel protocol, my open lapidus patients take an average of 7.5 oxycodone pills. My MIS binions take an average of 1.5. This is undisputable. We're working on publishing this data right now. Oops, sorry. There's a little bit of a lack of delay in my... Truth number two, you can correct rotation. This is a 61 year old female. You can see severely malrotated uh, metatarsal with displaced sesamoids. Six weeks post op on the CT scan, you can see almost complete correction of the deformity. Clinically, her foot looks great, and I've already done her second side. Truth number three, MIS does correct sesamoid position. In addition to the patient I just showed you, here's another example of a 44 year old man bilateral. You can see the pre op sesamoids are displaced. Here we are one year after his distal chevron Aiken. And not only can we see that the sesamoids are well reduced, we see a clinically excellent results and uh, robust bone healing compared to the pre-op. Truth number four, all bunions can recur. All right, not just distal bunion, distal osteotomy patients, but all bunion corrections can recur, even lapidus. Here's an example down below. We see a pre-op film. We see six weeks post-op, the correction looks excellent. However, when that pin comes out, the second toe starts to deviate and the big toe follows. Luckily, this was amenable to a percutaneous revision and the patient is now happy. Here's an example of more long-term data from um, one of my colleagues, Peter Lamb in Australia. Here's the pre-op films from 2013, six months post-op, an excellent correction. And six years post-op, you can see robust bony healing with maintenance of the correction. Another example from 2013, bilateral hallux valgus corrections, six-year follow-up, excellent maintenance of the correction. Truth number five, TMT instability is a relative contraindication to MIS. So here's a patient with some metatarsis adductus, not a severe deformity, and she really wanted to get back to work as quickly as possible. She did have some plantar gapping, but I decided to do a percutaneous distal chevron Aiken. Post-op x-rays, or intra-op x-rays looked awesome. First two weeks looked great. However, she was lost to COVID, showed up four months post-op with her foot looking like this. And yes, she has a delayed union, which was concerning, but more importantly, you can see the metatarsal has almost completely slipped off of the medial cuneiform, and we see increased plantar gapping. That was not a patient for an MIS distal uh, chevron. MIS lapidus is always an option. Here's an example of a 69-year-old. I was concerned about recurrence, and you can see it's six weeks post-op small incisions, minimal swelling, and excellent correction. So why wouldn't you wanna offer this to your patients? Less pain, you can correct big deformities. It's a tool in your toolbox that should say short-term results, similar short-term results. And yes, we still need the long-term data. Thank you.